during World War II after the Japanese submarine surfaced and started shelling uh, at the mouth of the Columbia River. They hit nothing but almost hit the wreck of the Peter Airedale. And then people became nervous, and so they built an, the Tillamook Air Base, which was two large blimp hangars, the largest wood structure buildings in the entire world, which one of them still stands today. The other one, unfortunately, was burned down but the one that still stands is now ha housing the Tillamook Air Museum. I have been numerous times in the building you see in the foreground. We used to go in there and get plywood. It had sawmills and things, so that was a good source for our plywood that we needed for building. We're so fortunate that this one remaining hangar still stands as a testimony to World War II. And uh, they no longer have the wigwam burners out front like the old ones used to have. <coughs> Billowing smoke skyward 24 hours a day, but at least it's still standing and you can go in it, and it houses a very, very nice air museum. We really enjoyed it. That was our first time there, but we intend to go back some more. The museum is very, very well laid out. It's taken a lot of thought and planning to do this, and so you can really enjoy it a lot. There are many hands-on exhibits there where you can actually sit in the cockpit of an airplane and also you can, uh, you can actually touch a lot of the things in there. Just seeing these blimp hangers from Highway 101 gives you no idea of how absolutely huge they are till you get up on them. They have to be pretty big to have got the title, the largest wood structure buildings in the world. The closer you get, the bigger it looks. As we drive up to find the front door to go in. As we pull up, we can see that we're in the right place by the writing on the old airplane out front. We cross the old railroad tracks and pull up. We can see the, some of the framework from the old blimp hanger that burned down in the background. We'll go right past this airplane, and there's lots of parking room where we can go in and enjoy this wonderful museum. During the war, there must have been a lot of activity around here as they run daily submarine patrols out off the coast. And even one time, they engaged with a Japanese submarine. So the story goes, there's some skepticism on that, whether there was actually a submarine there. But they did engage with something out there as near as I can find out from history. It's a stormy wintertime day, so there's not a whole lot of tourists there, although there's always some. So we're going to take advantage of this and go on in and see what we can see inside. There's even posters on the windows. Then we enter the building and find a very large gift shop with all sorts of gadgets and things in there, posters and pictures and things, and a lot to do with aircraft. Here's a picture of the blimp hanger when it was loaded with blimps. So we're going to go on in and take a look. It's totally stunning to see the amount of vintage aircrafts 
and other things they have in this museum. I wasn't expecting this much stuff. And I don't know what all this writing is on there, whether that's uh, kills or what it is. Maybe he was a camel hunter, but I don't know what that was. The airplanes in here aren't all World War II airplanes. There's some more modern jets, probably from the Cold War, Cold War era, here on display in this huge, huge wood structure building. Marge has always enjoyed seeing these aircrafts too, and when she was in high school, she took a bunch of tests where they had them do a bunch of exercises and things. And then at her 50-year reunion, the people that gave the tests came back and uh, to find out what they ended up doing in life. And anyway, Marge's test showed that she'd have made a very good airplane pilot. So, uh, But she did end up getting a job working in a thing that resembled the cockpit of an airplane with all kinds of knobs and throttles and everything in a huge sawmill that fed the logs into the mill. There are more shapes of airplanes than you could ever imagine, some with high wings, some with low wings, and some very, very fast-flying jets and some others that are just plain old war courses. And some that the wings fold up, so they were obviously intended for an aircraft carrier. And we can look down in this building and see that it's absolutely giant. And there is a blimp in here, but I think that was one made for the purpose of hauling logs out of the woods. And here's some more uh, aircraft with folding wings. And this is an airplane that crashed, and so they've got some of the, the twisted remains of this crashed airplane in here. And then more of the military planes for all purposes. And then antique tractors galore. There are more antique tractors here than you could imagine. And that's really nice since this is a farming area to have the tractors in here as well. These tractors were probably used right here around the Tillamook area. It's more a dairy area than anything. And there's even one on the old iron wheels. And after the tractors, we see the airplane engines. And there are airplane engines of all sorts here. This one even has a propeller on it. And here's some more airplane engines, some really powerful ones. This one's what they call a rotary engine. And it has all the cylinders in a circle. And I think it probably has a turbocharger on it. I never really looked to make sure, but a lot of them did have a turbocharger. That brought more oxygen into the carburetor so they could fly higher and have more power. You don't have to be an airplane buff to enjoy this place, and you'll learn a lot here. There's a lot of stuff about airplanes that anyone probably, that not everyone knows that you can see here and uh, write in person and see how it actually works. So it's an educational thing, too. Fortunately, they have uh, poster signs behind most, uh, by most all of them that tells you a little bit about the airplane that they belonged on and how they worked. There's even just a plain old motor that probably powered an airplane high in the skies. And then more of the 
huge motors of every kind of shape you can think of. I guess they just made the motor to fit whatever type airplane they were to get the maximum of power and, and to make it so it handles good. And they're propellers of all sizes and shapes here. I guess they made the propeller to fit whatever the, the workload was that it was needed for. And some of these engines are pretty huge and lots of valves and pistons and uh, whatever they need. This one even has two of those big engines in it. And then we see this blimp and I didn't read what it said on it, but I think I remember that being moored out front years ago. And I think it was made for the purpose of logging, although I'm not really certain of that. Whoever painted it must have had a sense of humor to put these cartoon figures on it. And then there's a little section in the back part of it that they rent to people to uh, park their recreational vehicles in, but only a small portion of it back there where you're not allowed to go. And then more military equipment. And here's a look inside a cockpit of a rather large airplane. There's, uh, there's not a whole lot of room in there, and you'd have to be good friends with a coal pilot because you couldn't be fighting on an airplane. And then they've got all their knobs and buttons and, and switches, and they'd have a checklist for all these uh, knobs and buttons and switches that you had to go through in order to fly this machine. And then the old by the wing plane were part of our history. They were used in World War One, I, I think, and uh, they were more for observation. And they did some bombing with them. You just hold a bomb in your hand and fly over the target and drop it. And then from there we go on to some of the early jet airplanes, and those things would really go screaming over your head. The Germans came out with the first jet airplanes during the war, and I knew a guy that I used to fish with that got credited for the first American to shoot down a German jet airplane. He said he just led it a whole bunch and gave it a burst of machine gun fire, and down it went. And he said they made such a racket and went so fast they couldn't believe what they were seeing. There's a lot of information here, but we were in a hurry. We got in there late in the day, and we didn't have time to read it. So I've got to go back and take some of that stuff in. They're just uh, more airplanes than, uh, than I can imagine of every different shape. And some of them looks like they'd be pretty crowded in the cockpit, but uh, they were built for a purpose, and they worked, and they worked good, and they would fly fast. There's some with high wings and some with low wings and lots of them with one motor and one wooden propeller, and then we go on and see the dual motor airplanes. I talked to some pilots one time, and they said the only advantage in having two motors is it takes you to the crash site sooner. And an old U.S. Navy helicopter is always nice to look at. And these machines haven't been around a whole long time, but they're extremely good. There's even a little one-manner. They're pleasure aircraft and work aircraft and military aircraft all over the place in here. There's a little guy that I'll bet really buzzes around. 
and then a big one here that probably goes fast and it's it's a jet again even an old car and this old military ambulance I remember back in the 1940s just after the war my dad bought a surplus one of those and we used it as our family car for years it uh, it was an old dodge and and I learned how to work on the thing and keep it running and when I got big enough that I could drive it I drove it and it was great for in the winter time going through the snow and everything and then there's some other buildings here this one is the helium room I guess that's where their helium pumps and things were and the helium tank was just outside there's a picture of that round ball which was the helium tank then as you walk around you'll find some other little rooms this is a room all of its own here uh, I, I don't know why they have it uh, uh, sort of like a tent in there maybe it was uh, for moisture control or something and there's some really nice little airplanes in here of of all different types there uh, just anything that would fly there there's an interesting looking one that would be a toy for someone with money to throw away and then uh, just a nice little open cockpit airplane and some more open cockpit airplanes then there's a room that has some mannequins and this is the way that the military people dress back during the war and then they have showcases with all sorts of different uh, artifacts in there from the aviation period of time many more showcases with pictures and articles and artifacts from the bygone era of aviation in them and then in the corner we see that some depth charges and I think they were probably similar to what they dropped on the supposedly submarine off Cape Kowanda they dropped many of them on on what they thought was the target there and it was probably some that looked like that and some of those look like smoke bombs in there and then some of the military uniforms and here's a picture of one of the big blimps like would hover over an enemy submarine and uh, and then call for help even the women had a part in the military during World War II and there are some of the uniforms they wore they were in a lot of times they just did uh, support things like working in the fixing airplanes and different things but uh, a big share of them were nurses which were very vital to the war effort and here's some of the photos of the building of these huge buildings one thing we need to do is support this outfit and uh, this blimp hanger here and the museum to keep it this artifact from a bygone era of war to uh, to keep it preserved for the future generations it's a very important thing Marge still hasn't got a chance to fly her airplane yet so we're gonna go look around in some of the cockpits of some of these planes here and see if we can find one that she could fly all these gauges and uh, and knobs and buttons I think you'd have to be an Einstein to be able to remember all them but a good checklist surely wouldn't hurt 
And Marge found one she'd like to fly here. So she's going to get her lifetime dream of flying one of these airplanes. She's looking the controls over and trying to figure out what they are. She says it's about out of fuel, and it doesn't have a steering wheel. It just has a stick. I guess that's what you you pull back and uh, and forth and rotate it to make the air so the airplane's very maneuverable at super high speeds. And then I think maybe the button on the top of it's the trigger for the machine gun, although I'm not certain of that. But she's looking it over. <laughs> if she's going to fly, I think I'm going to walk, though. After we went through the museum, which we didn't get a chance to go through it too good, there's just so much stuff to see in there that it just takes forever, then we're going to go on. I have an old picture of the old blimp hanger that was filled with hay and burning, and I don't know what I've done with it. I'll look it up sometime and put it on someplace. And until then, I have to go, and please subscribe and like and share.